Hello, I'm Elan Pelton, teaching and learning consultant at Conestoga College. This is the first video in a four-part series featuring information and ideas about remote classes in Zoom. This video provides an overview of the key features of Zoom for remote synchronous classes. See the other videos in the series for using Zoom features for lesson creation and delivery. Also, see the links list that accompanies this video series. To begin, I invite you to pause this video for two minutes for a brief reflection. First, using an electronic document or on a piece of paper, answer the following questions. A talking head is someone who does all of the talking with no breaks or activities. Why strive to blend the talking head lesson format with student-centered active learning? Second, what are the goals of using Zoom meetings? How will you keep learning outcomes in mind while making decisions about how to use Zoom features? On this slide, I have provided in chart form a summary of the basic features of Zoom for providing remote lessons. Faculty as hosts have access to a microphone, a camera, and screen sharing features for delivering lessons. Students as participants also have access to these features. Both faculty and students may use the group chat quick feedback, back buttons, and annotate features. Only faculty as hosts can create polls. Faculty can adjust to control how students use these tools as shown in the screenshots to the right of the basic features chart. This video will briefly cover how these Zoom features may be used for remote lesson delivery. First, screen sharing and camera sharing. In combination with the faculty's camera and microphone, screen sharing allows faculty to share with students a full desktop or screen, a single window containing a web page, PowerPoint slides, Word document, PDF, or any other app, a whiteboard or a blank screen, and content on an iPad or iPhone, including tablet drawings. Use the screen share feature for presenting slides, procedures, examples, course resources, and web pages. Faculty may show one or two screens and use one or two cameras to provide seamless, innovative presentations and demonstrations. Right now, I'm using a single camera and screen share of my open browser window to deliver this PowerPoint. Simple presentation examples may include delivering a slideshow, discussing an infographic, chart, or table, sharing a video clip, audio recording, or music clip, solving a visual problem on a whiteboard, and showing an assignment submission procedure on Econestoga or team sites. More advanced presentations may include showing a document using a second document camera, using a second camera to show a demonstration or procedure from a different angle, and showing the pages of an ebook or the features of a mobile phone app. While there are great benefits to faculty-focused screen and camera sharing, the power of Zoom lies in its features that promote student engagement and learning. The Zoom group chat is a text-based chat feature that may be used to send messages publicly to all students or privately to one student at a time, to ask the class for written ideas, opinions, and comments, to provide activity instructions, video and web page hyperlinks and other files, and to collect questions that students may have. Most students will likely be familiar with using the chat tool. Zoom chat is also useful for large classes and as an alternative means of communicating uh, by students and if Zoom features are unavailable or if students are uncomfortable using those other features. Zoom chats, both public and private, may be saved for after the meeting. Quick feedback buttons are located in the participants tab. These buttons may be used for audience response, particularly in large groups or in a short time frame, to gain students' focus, to poll opinions, to conduct reviews of a prior lesson, and to conduct formative assessments of learning. Also to receive feedback on any technical difficulties that students may be experiencing. Quick feedback can promote attention and engagement throughout the remote meeting. 
from beginning to end, as well as making transitions between activities. Here are some ideas for the quick feedback buttons for student responses. Raise your hand if you can hear me. Is this answer correct? Click either yes or no. Do you agree with this statement? Click either thumbs up or thumbs down. Is my delivery pace too fast or too slow? Click either faster or slower. The reactions buttons allow students to celebrate or give a thumbs up to what they hear and what they see and automatically disappear after five seconds. You can celebrate to applaud or show appreciation for a good presentation and give a thumbs up to, to support an idea. Zoom polls provide another way to gain student attention for opinions and to provide formative assessments. Uh, they can be delivered ahead of time in the Zoom portal and unlimited polls may have between two and 10 options per question. The types of polls are that you can make one choice or make multiple selections. Faculty can show poll responses to the class and save all responses in an Excel file. The same Zoom poll may be delivered multiple times within the same meeting, for example, to compare pre and post lesson responses. Examples of instructions for one answer poll questions include choose the correct answer, choose the best option, indicate your preference. Examples of instructions for a multiple answer poll include choose two of your favorite, choose which statements are true, select all that apply. And finally, the annotate tool allows participants to draw directly on the Zoom screen. Drawing tools include text, line, and shape drawing stamps and spotlight arrows. Annotate may be used to highlight or draw attention to part of the screen during lesson delivery, to facilitate a check-in, opinions, or brainstorm activities with students, or to give students some free time for creative drawing. Screenshots of the annotations may be saved to the faculty's device. Note that not all devices have annotation as a feature. The annotate feature enables participants to draw and type directly onto the screen. The presenter may screen share, then write responses that the other students give. Alternately, using the annotate feature, students may add responses to the screen themselves. So here, I am using the PowerPoint slide itself to be able to record responses. And now here, I am using the annotate feature to write directly on the screen. Students may also be asked to use the stamp option on the screen if they prefer. So here, I'm going to stamp my preferences. I'll choose this one and this one. This slide highlights a useful 10 minute video that demonstrates basic Zoom features. It is available on the links list. As you watch the video, reflect on the following questions. First, what's a lesson delivery control feature might seem readily usable for you and which ones are going to take some practice? Second, which strategies for gaining focus and asking for feedback will be important in your lesson? How will you incorporate these features into your lesson? Thank you for viewing this video and answering these reflection questions. For more information on basic Zoom features, visit the IT Conestoga webpage on Zoom. Also, the online Zoom Help Center has videos and articles on every Zoom feature. Continue to the next video in this series to learn more about developing activities for engagement and learning in classes delivered in Zoom.